tell you that Wingard Wearables is slowly becoming one of my favorite companies. And I recently received this as a gift from Zach Wingard. Thank you very much, Zach, for this amazing gift and what I am looking at here today. One tool that really caught my eye, the Wingard Stingray. When you first take a look at any of the weapons that Zach Wingard has designed in his catalog, it's very eye-catching. It immediately makes you think. And the one thing that caught my eye as somebody who studied weapons his entire life about this Stingray was its compactness. There's something about a weapon that once it is compact, the first thing I think of is that this tool is going to be highly effective in combative contexts. Some weapons you just take a look at and you kind of go, all right, I think it's kind of good for health practices. I think it's cool. But I think the Stingray and the entire catalog of weapons that Zach happens to have is very close to the combative spectrum. And any weapon that tends to be on the compact side is going to excel more in the combative spectrum. There's just four things that immediately stand out. One of them is this beautiful edge that is so wonderfully designed because you can just tell by the look at it. If I use this as a weapon, wow, this one is going to be really effective in terms of its use. But I think this really excels in the war pike kind of use. This one doesn't terminate at a super sharp needle point. It's hard to tell, but it's more on a screwdriver point, like a flathead screwdriver. And Zach, I asked Zach if he could send me some of the test video in terms of its soft target use. And my gosh, the penetration and extraction capabilities of this war pike is really phenomenal and frankly, a little intimidating. But the fact can so quickly penetrate and retract tells me that this is the kind of tool, especially when I have the war pike leading, it tells me that it's very good with these kinds of wittick movements. So if I'm using the clock system and I'm going this way, wittick this way, posting this way, wittick this way, these kinds of draw strikes tells me that one, because of that compact design, I'm able to retain the weapon far better. I can retain the weapon. There's not a lot of areas for the opponent to possibly catch it. But also number two, because of its relative lightness and the fact that it can penetrate and extract very quickly, this is going to be one of those super multi-directional tools that's going to work really well, especially in close combat. So you have this super sharpened edge, this flat head war pipe. You have this as well so that I can go ahead and punch. And I also have the wonderful Puno, this very, very beautiful beautifully executed war tool that's going to be so much fun to learn from but also really utilize in that compact tomahawk kind of methodology. I also really like the aesthetic of it. What you're seeing here, it's called the Stingray, is you see this homage to the skin of a Stingray which I absolutely fall for every time because as you can see I love my katana and the Samegawa on the handle in the traditional models where they have the Samegawa, the Stingray wrap handle around the handle. And I think that's such a fantastic aesthetic choice to be using on this because in many ways it's an homage to samurai swords. I just love this aesthetic so much. But I will say that the critical feature of this tool that makes me think just how devastating it would be, and I know Robin's going to love this one, is the fact that the majority of its mass is along the war pike versus the war head. So what's cool about this? It behaves like an imbalanced tool. So think of Kukri, think of Itak, Sayok, Winkler, Tomahawk, where it's not neutrally balanced. So when I start to move this way, it starts to develop its own momentum. I can already feel it. You see how it's pressing into my palm here. It's already signaling for my tricep line to fire. And oh man, that's going to be really fun to work with. I just love what he has done with the Stingray. A bit of a word of caution is that I don't think I'm necessarily going to move with the Stingray with the warhead in place. The mass is going to go towards me, so I'm not too crazy about it. What I do like in terms of the use of this possible use is that it's a kind of back cutting capability, but really more along the defensive. So if 
if I happen to come in this way with the forehand and I need to kind of counter, I can come in this way. So that's what my initial thoughts on it right now. I think the more time I spend with it, I think I'm going to have a few more insights as I spend more time with it. Also, as with all Wingard wearables, it does come with this fantastically designed Vulpes training tool. And I think Robin and I are gonna have a lot of fun when we go ahead and practice and train with this, which reminds me, we have the Vulpes Sayok Winkler. So that's gonna be a bit of an interesting face off, but I really hope you enjoy this video as I go ahead and move with the Wingard wearable Stingray. Thank you for letting me share and I hope you enjoy this video. Since the majority of the mass of the Wingard Stingray is behind it, it's going to come back and bite you if you put it in the back. You want that front war spike to be in the front so that that front leverage works in your favor. You're going to be working with the buoy combatives curriculum and pedagogy so that when you move with it, it's gonna be a lot of short striking, a lot of wit takes, a lot of snap cuts, but you're gonna have some back cutting capabilities in there also because of that sharpened edge. So I can back cut right across and you can get the back of the neck of your target when you happen to do this. So although it is very compact, it is very versatile and has a lot of offensive capabilities. Let's take a look at the snap cut. Again, it's a basic snap of the wrist going right down the center line, and it doesn't take a lot of power. It's really a true snap of the wrist. There are several targets that I like to use for this. Definitely anything along the center line, especially on the high and mid line, but sometimes I do like to use it in different line levels where I like to go into the low line, and that's basically the only time where I would go ahead and switch grips so that when I switch grips here, I'm gonna have the edge forward and the pike comes up the perimeter you may be tempted to utilize some sort of sectional gripping but because that front edge does not terminate you don't want to choke up on it you want to keep it on a mid grip when you're using the stingray it is an extremely quick and powerful tomahawk especially with that war spike really working that penetration and stabbing capability although we are using the biomechanics of slashing and cutting so we are using a lot of arm centric movements for speed we can use wrist based techniques like this abanico to a high line penetration and extraction or an abanico into a low line with this kind of speed sometimes you develop a kind of momentum where the handle spins in your hand and this is something you want to avoid because if it spins the other way and the spike is now behind you again a reminder that it can hit you because of the leverage and the design of that pike although the stingray is a compact tomahawk it also excels in long range notice that i use throwing mechanisms when i use the stingray in a secondary position and i think it excels here there's a lot of non-telegraphic movement that can be utilized because I'm using the mass of my torso to hide the tomahawk. Then I can move it right back to some form of primary position where I can jab and strike then go ahead and use it in close quarters. Notice the speed and movement of the entire stingray and I'm going to bring up the speed here a little bit just so you can see just how devastating it could be if you use it in close quarters and using primarily arm centric movements. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around. Stay tuned. More videos to come.